welcome back welcome back so back in our main folder i'm going to go to where it says task 2 and in task 2 the first thing i want to do is open the actual thing that we have to do i'm not going to open anything else just yet let's open this and see what we have to do so yeah this is level 3 the total marks for this section is 21 marks you have three hours in which you have to complete everything and the task is you have to identifying and fixing defects in an existing piece of code instructions for students you must complete all parts of the activity within the assessment the task must be undertaken at the time and date specified by pearson you will be given th three hours for producing the outcomes for this task your center will advise you of when supervised breaks have been scheduled the task must be completed under supervised conditions you are not permitted access to the internet during this task you are permitted to use offline versions of relevant software to produce evidence for this task files provided for use during this activity task 2 underscore test underscore log underscore template dot doc task two underscore non working code dot text your work and any material provided must be kept securely at all times set task brief you are a member of the programming team that is developing a program to meet the requirements in the set task information your manager has asked you to look at some code that a junior software developer has produced but is not yet functional the code that is not yet functioning is provided for you in the file task two underscore non working code dot text the code should meet the requirements in the set task information activity you will need to use the information provided in the set task information, the non-functioning code provided in the file task 2 underscore non-working code dot text. You must produce and apply a test plan to identify the defects that are preventing the program code in the file task 2 underscore non-working code dot text from functioning. Apply a solution to fix the defects in the program code provided document the process that you followed to fix the code. When applying a solution to fix the defects you must ensure the code meets the requirements in the set task information Use Python 3 programming language, follow accepted programming conventions, test your solution to ensure that it functions as expected. Two files are provided for use during this activity. Outcomes for submission. Save your code as PDF files and as .text files. Save your testing document as a PDF file. All files should be saved in your folder for submission. Even though it says here to save your code as PDF files and as text files, I would do PDF files, so that's a normal PDF. A text file is just a normal TXT file. But I would also do a Python file because earlier it said that you're supposed to use a Python 3 programming language. So whatever you have your code as, also copy and paste that entire Python file. So it's going to be a .py file. So let's just say for argument's sake, the name of it is going to be task2code. You do task2code.py. Reason being, you're trying to make the examiner's life easier. Examiners are going to use, most likely going to use this thing called Notepad or are going to use the Python text editor and they want to simply right click on there and edit with Notepad or right click and edit with Python Idle or Python IDE, whatever it's called. There is some more information in this document here. However, I'm not going to go through this because these requirements here are specific to this paper that I downloaded from 2021. The 2024 and onwards papers are going to be completely different in terms of the requirements that they have for the code that you need to fix. So what I'm going to do is simply go over the mark scheme and maybe go over the process that you need to follow. Before I go any further, because this is going to be a Python 3 or Python program, the two IDEs, Integrated Development Environments, that I would highly recommend to students doing this are PyCharm. This is completely free. They have a community version. You can go on here and download it for free. You can speak to your teacher to then speak to the IT guys at your school. They should be able to install this. And again, it's completely free, but it is one of the best ones I've found. It gives really good error messages. It helps you to pinpoint exactly where the errors are in your code another one that's really good as well is called funny t-h-o-n-n-y this again is completely free this is a lot less heavy on resources compared to PyCharm, but it does more or less the same thing it doesn't look as nice doesn't have as many features but it will get the job done if i go back to the folder that we have everything in we're going to have two files that you get in the exam so these are files that will be provided to you by your teacher by the examiner whoever file number one is task two test log template you will need to use this as your template for your test log do not go and create another file do not go and create anything this is what you will need to use you also have task to non-working code this is python code but it's probably just yeah it's just a normal text file txt file you can copy this into your ide so i mentioned before pycharm or thunny and it will simply detect whatever needs to be detected and you'll be able to run the code no problem if i open task to test log i don't have microsoft word installed on this pc here so it's going to look a bit wonky when you open the test log this is what you'll see it's completely empty but this is what you're going to have to work with please as i mentioned before don't go ahead and create anything whatever you want to put in your test log 
you can add it in here. You don't have to use the tables going across or going. You can edit this document, but try to stick to at least the headings that they've given you. Next, this is the code that you're going to be given. Again, this is not the exact copy of the code you will have, but this is it's going to look something like this because it's probably going to be using Python 3 as well. And you need to copy this into your IDE of choice. As I mentioned before, I've said PyCharm is one of a really good one and also Thunny. So I'm going to copy this into Thunny or PyCharm at some point and to show you roughly what it will look like. This again is the code that you're going to be given. So this is just a normal text file. I'm going to highlight everything in this document. And to do that, I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard. Then I'm going to press the A for alpha key on my keyboard as well. Just tap it once. It's going to highlight everything. And to copy it, you can either right click and do copy or you can do control again hold it down and press c to copy i'm going to go into pycharm this is the ide i told you about earlier i created a project this shouldn't be too hard for anyone just go new project name it and just click create i'm going to right click on the name of the project the name on my project is or my folder is t level test code right click on that i'm going to go to new then i'm going to go to python file click on python file here i can just call this one test because i'm only going to have this one file it's going to create an empty section on the right hand side here i'm going to do Control, press and hold control again, and then press V for Victor on my keyboard. That's going to paste everything I copied earlier. Before you do anything, this might actually pick up some of the errors. And as you can see on the right hand side of my screen, it has some red lines. Straight away, those are some errors that the program has found without you even running the code. So, this is why I recommend something like this. So, you can go in now and pick out what these errors are, even though you've copied stuff in here and you figured out what maybe two or three errors are. Please don't fix them straight away and try to run the program. What you need to do is you need to have the code open. So let me drag this to the left of my screen and then to the right of my screen, I'm going to have my test plan. It's not very good on my screen, but you get the idea. You need to have both of these things open at the same time. The reason being you need to be filling out your test log. So the task to test log. You need to be filling this out whilst you're finding the errors, whilst you're running and testing the program. You need to have this one there straight away. So it says, for example, description of test. What would you do for description of test? Simply describe what you're testing. So just to see if the program runs. So you could simply say testing to see if the code runs. Test data. At the moment, there's going to be none because you're just going to click on it just to see if it runs. Next, we have expected outcome. And for expected outcome, one of the good things about PyCharm is that if it's a red error, that means it's like a big serious error. If it's a RNG looking one, that means, okay, it might work. It might not work. Those are the two errors that I have here. I have red, I have uh, red again, and I have orange. So I think what's going to happen is as soon as I run this program, it's going to crash because this here is crazy. This, this is the very first thing here. It, it is, it tells you that this function is actually being used later on in the program. Straight away, it tells me that when I run this program, once this function is called, it's going to crash. So expected result, I expect the program to crash. It shouldn't even start running in the first place. Then when you scroll over on the test plan, let me scroll over. It says actual outcome. So how do I get my actual outcome filled in? Just say exactly what happened. Your expectation is different from actuality. Your expectation is what you think would happen based on me looking on this piece of code right here. I think it will crash straight away right? Because this is a red error. Red is a, a bad kind of error. And again, let's see where this function is being um, used. So get name. Let me scroll all the way down. Uh, where is get name? Get name. Oh, it's the very first thing that's actually done. So yeah, that's definitely going to crash. So now for actual outcome, you can click on the play button here to run test. But for some reason, I just like to right click and go to run test here. It does exactly the same thing. And I was correct. Expected outcome is that um, it actually crashes. So the program doesn't run. It crashes as soon as you run it. Three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two. One thing I would do just to go a step further again, because it gives you this wonderful, nice error down here, I would probably screenshot this. So go to snipping tool in Windows, press start, SNIP, snipping tool, and then you click on new. And I would highlight this down here as the error I got. So this is my actual result when I run the program. I will go back to my Word document here and on the actual outcome, I would paste this and then I would just give maybe a sentence describing exactly what happened. So this is the error that came up when I tried to run the program. The program crashed. It didn't work. Whatever you decide is sensible. And finally, it says comments and intended actions. How do you intend to move forward? We have to fix this. There's no way getting around fixing this. So the good thing about PyCharm, again, it tells us what is being ex what is expected because this is a function. We need to have an open bracket 
we need to have a close bracket and we need to have a colon as well. That wasn't there, so that's why it crashed. However, let's just say you did only the thing that it told you. So it said syntax error expected open bracket. So if we did only open bracket and we try to run this again, it would tell us that we need to also have a close bracket because it said uh, the, 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 the thing was never closed. So let's close it. All right, that's perfect. And now if I run this again, it tells me, okay, I need a colon now. So there we go. And if I run this one more time, then it tells me what the next error is. So we're finished with this error now. So what I would do for this is for the comments and intended actions, I would say I will fix the error by adding the missing section. Oh, sorry about the all caps lock thing. Let me zoom in, adding the missing sections and it should be define get underscore name, open bracket, close bracket, colon. This is what is expected. That's how you would fix it. For this first one, we needed no test data because all I did, I right clicked, I clicked on run just to see the program would actually work to see if it would run without an error. It didn't, but that's perfectly fine. For test data, you would need to put some data in and you would also need to maybe screenshot it to show exactly what you did. Let's just use the same thing that we had before. So it's, it says get name. I'm going to use get name and get username as, as my examples. A normal name, right? A normal value that would be accepted as a name is Adam Bashir one of my favorite Marvel characters, right? Adam Bashir. That's normal. That should work perfectly fine for getting someone's name. This program should accept it. Everything is good. This might look perfectly okay. Erroneous. It says Adam Bashir again. However, this is a username and typically usernames don't have a space. So even though this is perfectly acceptable as a normal name, as a username, maybe not so much. Some systems might accept it, but most of them won't accept a username with a space. So Adam Bashir should not work. Any name with a space should not work. And for extreme data, you could simply put one character. So A, or you could put the number one. Just one single thing to see if it would work. I don't know a single person with just an, a single letter as their name, first name or last name. So you could do that as a test. If it's too short, it shouldn't work. If it's too long, it shouldn't work. For example, this is way too long. It says this is the longest name that you will ever see in your entire life. I can almost guarantee this. So this is the person's name. Definitely not a thing that should be accepted. This is way too long. So again, every time you test, you need to run your program, put in some normal data, do your screenshots, fill in all the other sections, come back cancel that one, run the program again, put in some erroneous data, screenshot that, come back, close it, do it again, put in some extreme data, so something just really stupid and out there, run the program, screenshot it, come back again and repeat the process for everything. So if it was get age, you would do exactly the same thing, but maybe instead of the normal data would be, let's say 50, erroneous data would be 5, zero a right that's a bit crazy extreme data would be zero minus one nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine point nine nine for age so that's how you should be doing this section